So, Billy, is this just about it for your rain or um, <laughs> rain going to Maryland? Um, rain, we'll, we'll use that term lightly. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we expect Fran to be back tomorrow. Um, he's been preparing with Coach Dillard, uh, watching film, and then you know, we've met as a staff a few different times, had conversations, and just making sure we're organized and ready to go. And uh, we expect Coach to be full go tomorrow and then get on the plane and head to Maryland. So he's doing a lot better physically and everything. Right? Yes, yes, he is. Connor McCaffrey be available to play? Uh, we hope so. Uh, we had the day off yesterday, so you know I know he was getting treatment and probably doing some work on his own. So we'll see how he is. Obviously, we got practice coming up here soon. Um, so again, it's it really truly is day by day, just seeing how he feels each progressing day. Hopefully, he's feeling a little bit better today. Uh, we'll see if he can you know get on the court and do some activities. Um, but we're certainly hope, hoping to get him back sooner rather than later. What would it mean to have him back? Yeah, you know Connor. Uh, brings a lot to the table for us. I, I, obviously, he doesn't. It's not always a scoring, uh, but it's so much more that, that he does. And you know, it, it's just kind of a unique situation. Obviously, for for Fran, it's his son. So talking about his son and what he does. But from from our standpoint, from a coaching perspective, you know, Connor's toughness, his his intelligence and understanding the game, um, kind of defensive assignments, rotations. Um, it's just kind of that veteran leadership that you have. And then from an offensive standpoint, you know, he facilitates ball movement for us. So whether it's getting the ball moving side to side or getting into the post or the timing of when to screen, when to cut, when to, to deliver the ball, it's all really, really critical. So to have that veteran presence back, especially on a road game, uh, kind of in a hostile environment, would, would be important for us. You know, Joe Toussaint, he gave you six minutes in the mm – -hmm. and he played hard. He, he gave you a spark on defense. The second half he didn't play, but he seemed to have all the right body language. Yes. How important is that? Because this obviously can't be easy for him. Yeah, no, it's 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 huge. It's huge to have um, to have Joe Toussaint have that kind of great attitude, great energy, cheering on his teammates is really important and really speaks to the culture of our program. And you know, the last time we played Maryland, Joe Toussaint had nine points and nine assists. He was really impactful in that game and uh, was was guarding fats, so it was a tough assignment. And you know, he did a you know did a good job for us. So to, to have Joe that can you know, still be a positive you know, contributor for us, because again, he's going to have moments where he's going to play extremely well for us. Uh, just like Aaron Eula stepped up, we're just going to need different guys to step up. It's a unique roster, unique team uh, that we have a lot of different guys that can play and can impact the game for us. Patrick has had a couple of his best scoring and rebounding games the last two games. Uh, is he getting better as a player? And if so, how? I think the. Uh, what we're seeing with Patrick is the game is slowing down for him. Uh, you know, as you get more experience, you get more comfortable out there. You start to go through uh, the league, you know, for a second time, and you're starting to see some different coverages, and you're starting to understand the game. So I, I think for him, uh, things are really coming together, and I think you know, again, his trajectory is continuing to go forward and in, and in, and increase. But it's great to see him playing the way that he's playing. He's playing with a, an elite level of confidence. He's shooting the ball well from three. Uh, he's getting to the basket. And you know, we kind of go back. He was playing really well in the summer, and then he, he had a couple ankle injuries early in the fall, I'm sure Fran mentioned. So it, it was kind of a long process to get him back and get him to 100%. Uh, but now he's feeling good physically, mentally. And again, really, the sky's the limit. And it's great to see him start, starting to kind of move towards his potential. Fran said on his radio show last night, talked about the lineup change to Jordan and just why he did that or why you guys did that. What, what did you see as maybe what the team needs out of the gate to, to have him in there at the point? Yeah, you know, I think you know, a lot of it's you know, getting Jordan going again, too. Um, you know, I think it, it's, it goes both ways. And um, you know, we lost a couple in a row, so you, you never want it to feel like it's one guy's fault because uh, Joe Toussaint plays hard and he contributes in so many ways for us. Uh, but we thought, you know what, maybe this change could help us offensively. Uh, we've been struggling a, a little bit with some of our offensive efficiency. So, you know, maybe getting Jordan back at the point, pushing the basketball, um, maybe that would create some more space for, for Keegan to get opportunities in and around the, the paint. And, um, you know, we were fortunate that, you know, Jordan made a couple threes early, which was good. So and then, again, the defense really had to be picked up on him from a Minnesota standpoint. And, just gave more room to some other guys to be able, whether it was Patrick or Keegan, to take advantage of that space. Does he, does he articulate to you that he's like more comfortable in that position or anything like that? Or? I, I think Jordan's just always been a team guy. I think you know, even as we saw in the Minnesota game, you know, especially the the last 15 minutes, he was off the ball quite a bit with Aaron Eulis. Um, so you know, I think with, whether it's Jordan, Aaron, 
Joe Toussaint, Tony Perkins, those four guards all have the ability to play on or off the ball and play kind of with different combinations of people. So, you know, I, I like when I when we see, you know, Aaron Eulis with the point and Bohannon's the two and then Bohannon's at the one and Eulis is at the two or Tony's at the two or Joe T's in with Eulis and, you know, whoever's on the ball. So I think that kind of flexibility, you know, just makes our offense a little bit more dynamic. We're not relying on one guy to kind of be the primary ball handler decision maker. Billy, with the way the team's constructed, it really seems like that when the transition offense is going, your half court offense is better. Um, but when the transition is not going, maybe the half court struggles a little bit. Is that a fair assessment? And if so, how do you kind of try to get that tempo offense going without trying to force it? Yeah, I think the the hard part always is you know your transition game is based on your defense. So being able to get defensive stops and then you can run in transition. Um, obviously, we've been a team that's, that's stolen the ball quite a bit this year, so we're a big steals team. So whether it's in our three-quarter court pressure, uh, some of our trapping, run and jump trapping, or, or even at half court, you know, forcing turnovers, then we can get out and transition and have some number break situations. So, you know, for us, it's about getting stops. When we can get stops, um, you know, we, we certainly we, we obviously run on makes and misses. Everybody knows we're going to push the ball on, on makes as well. But it takes something out of you every time you're taking the ball out of the net and trying to push it against a stacked defense or play against a stacked defense at the half court level. So uh, w if we can get stops and we can get out and transition, it makes things a lot easier for us. When you broke down Sunday's tape, what were you doing well defensively in the second half? Was it just the intensity or was it you know, some other things? I, I think the, the big change uh, the last 15 minutes was the, the ball pressure at the point of attack, um, whether it was Aaron Uless or, or you know, Bohannon. Um, even when you know, Keegan was up pressuring the ball, um, I think that kind of an individual defense up top really sparked everybody else. It allowed some of our guys to kind of be up in the passing lanes. Um, it just it, we pushed their offense further from the basket. Uh, so then we were able to get the you know couple two or three shot clock violations that we got in the second half, um, and everybody behind because we weren't in scramble situation. We weren't, we weren't getting broken down off the dribble. Uh, where they're getting in the paint, making plays, and now we're in scramble situations. So I just think that aggressiveness at the point of attack really helped us, and, and guys were able to feed off of that energy, and, and then everybody else, the crowd, kind of got into it as well. Anything different with Maryland this time around um, that, that you've seen how they've developed as a, as a team? Yeah, you know, they're, they're obviously a really dangerous team, right? Because, you know, they've had some incredible games, whether it was the Illinois game or even the home game against Michigan State. They lost, but again, was you know super competitive. Uh, their game against Rutgers, that were the home game where they kind of felt like they had control of that game, lost, but then went to Rutgers and played unbelievable and, and won there at the rack. Um, so just a really interesting team because when you have the dynamic scores that they have and experienced guys, um, you know, obviously Ayala can score it as as good as anybody in our in our league. Uh, and, you know, Fats, his speed is just a, a game changer because, you know, you just don't see that elite level speed uh, very often. So it's just hard to, to game plan for that kind of athleticism and speed. And then Dante Scott obviously can score the ball, you know, makes jumpers, post up. And then Wahab is just a, he's a handful on, on the block, and he hurt us the first time around as well. He's really efficient. Um, so, again, when you have that kind of dynamic scoring and playmaking, it's just a matter of, okay, how, how are we going to get stops? How are we going to get multiple stops, consecutive stops, so that, again, we can get out and transition and not go against kind of their stack defense? Do you anticipate Perkins starting again on Thursday, or have you talked about that? You know, uh, we haven't talked about it. You know, we'll go in, we'll have practice. Since we were off yesterday, we'll go in, we'll have practice these next two days and kind of see how things progress. Uh, but, you know, again, we're just kind of having the mentality, all hands on deck, everybody be ready to go. Uh, so, again, when your name is called, step up and perform. Um, and, and, again, if guys continue to have a good attitude, whatever their role is for that particular game, that'll go a long way for us. Where do things stand, would you say, between, not between, but like with Ulyss and Tucson, it looked like Ulyss had maybe moved past him in our eyes, but was that just a one-game thing in your eyes? or? Yeah, you know, again, like I said, the, the first time around, you watch that film against Maryland, and Joe Toussaint played fantastic. Um, so, you know, we're, we're ready to use kind of whoever in, in whatever roles we need to. And, um, you know, Joe will be ready, as I'm sure Tony will be as well. And we'll have a good practice today, so we'll get a good gauge on kind of where guys are. Tough to win on the road in this league, obviously. Um, what are some of the keys that you guys have learned this year when you've been close? Mm -hmm. Penn State, some other games where you were right there but can't. 
Um, yeah, you know, we, to have the, the last couple road games where you know Rutgers goes right down to the wire, you know, obviously a one possession game, and, and you know goes down to free throws at the end. Penn State, you know, one possession. You know, if we get one stop there in overtime, uh, but go to double overtime. So we've been really competitive on the road. Uh, but again, it really comes down to can you defend and rebound on the road, and you know our defense. Um, was really good at Rutgers. Uh, we didn't always rebound the ball the best against them. Uh, against Penn State, they out-rebounded us, uh, and, and that wasn't a good thing for us. So you know, our ability to, again, to be able to rebound the ball and play in transition, play the way that we like to play, and, and try to impose some of our will on the game. It seemed like you just you didn't sub much at all in the second half. Was that just a feel thing, or was that kind of your plan going into the game? Yeah, you know what? We used a lot of guys in the first half, and, and you know we got a lot of guys involved. And then um, you know, kind of as we went to our bench early in the second half, um, that that unit just got into a really good flow. And you know, uh, I've learned kind of over the years, if a, if a unit has it going, you, you don't mess with that. Um, we got a couple quick subs in there, uh, so that guys didn't have to go the entire long haul. Peyton Sanford came back in and gave us some minutes in the second half, uh, but we we kind of tightened the rotation just because they had a really good thing going. And we just wanted to stay with it. And the, the tempo was different in that game too, uh, because you know Minnesota had so many long possessions. Uh, so that, you know, obviously the game was over an hour and forty-five minutes. So it was a you know fast-paced game, not many fouls, long possessions. Uh, so it kind of shortened the game a little bit. So it, it felt a little bit different than kind of your normal game. If there's a bunch of possessions, a bunch of stoppages, um, where guys were able to kind of keep the flow going, and, and we certainly didn't want to mess up that flow they had. It just seemed like you're really intentional about. You know, Chris and Keegan, or Keegan and Phillip, you know, just trying to work those three guys so that they're kind of on their, you know, sharing the minutes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I got Keegan the whole 45 seconds of rest. Um, you know, tried to, I, I was trying to get him a couple times before the media uh, timeout to give him a little extended break, but, you know, then, you know, there would be a whistle right away, and it's like, all right, let's get you back in there. Uh, but those guys gave us a lot, and, and, you know, Philip and Chris, I thought played significantly better in the second half. Uh, Chris obviously made a big three for us uh, in the second half during that run. Philip had a couple baskets early, you know, a jump shot, one in the paint. And I thought defensively, I thought both of those guys really were much tougher defensively in the second half, trying to guard on the interior, being physical, and rebounding the basketball. So we're just trying to, as much as possible, keep fresh bodies, relatively speaking. Uh, but with the, the tempo of the game and the long possessions, uh, and the flow we had, you know, we, we wanted to stay with it. Okay, thanks, Coach. Get a couple thanks. players. Uh, hey, Jordan, what do you what do you uh, what do you like about being back at the point guard, at least in the starting? I know at the end it was different, but just yeah. as far as starting out the game at that point. Yeah, no, I just I don't know. I, for some reason, I just had have had a hard time getting in rhythm at the two guard spot the last couple of games and. Um, you know, point guard's really the place where I, I've been at the last, you know, five, six years here at Iowa. So whenever, when I, when I was able to move back there and um, kind of get some transition threes going and get my confidence back, I was able to play a little more like myself. So um, Keegan was getting the ball in easier spots, and um, I was just trying to find guys to get Pat going. Pat had a great game last game, and um, you know, I was just trying to do what I can to do what I've done the past, you know, a couple years at Iowa. You talked to Joe before the season and kind of told him that he would be the guy and now things are a little bit different. Have you talked to him about that and tried to keep him engaged for when his time does come back? Yeah, I'm just trying to keep him positive. You know, he's a very hardworking guy and a um, guy that loves playing for Iowa and wants to continue to try to help the team win. So I don't know, I, I continue when he was going to get subbed in the last game. I, I brought him to my side. I was like, don't be afraid to shoot. Stay positive. Continue to run the team, lead the team. And he's been always great about taking advice from myself and other guys on the team. And um, I think that's why he's going to continue to be great. You know, he, you've seen him do great things already at, at, at Iowa. So there's still a lot of basketball left for him. And um, I think he's going to continue to keep working like he always has. Patrick, if you're one of Joe's closest friends, have you said anything to keep his spirits up or does he need that? Um, he's, always, he's a pretty confident kid just by nature, which is kind of how he is. Um, so, you know, not, I don't really feel like I keep his spirits up. Just, you know, I just continue to be a friend, be a brother to him, um, somebody he can talk to about whatever. You know, we still just kind of 
I don't know, shoot crab, just do the same regular stuff that we always have done, no matter whether he's in the starting lineup or not. So I just, you know, just try to be a friend to him. Don't really try to, don't want to overdo it. Like, just don't try to, don't want to overstep my bounds, but just, you know, be there for him if he needs me and just, you know, be a friend, be a brother to him. Patrick, do you feel like you're playing your best ball right now? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, it's game's really starting to slow down for me. Um, uh, I've, I've been able to get into a really good rhythm. My three ball feels as good as it has ever since I've been at Iowa. Um, I've always been a, somebody who's been a good shooter in practice in whatever situation, just in the game sometimes. It's a little different just with flow and everything like that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm finding confidence in my shot, and that kind of opens up the rest of my game, gives me the ability to slash, you know, run, go to the glass, all that sort of stuff. And it opens up my passing and everything. It just really opens up the floor for me. So I think that's really been the biggest thing. And uh, yeah, I would say I'm really confident out there right now. I'm, I'm as well a pretty confident person just by nature. But um, you know, I definitely feel really good about where I'm at right now. Is there anything mechanically you did with your three to, to get it? Or is it just a matter of confidence? Not really mechanically, to be honest. Sometimes I, I shoot it a little flat. Um, so I would say that maybe is an adjustment that I've made. Uh, but really, I think it's just you know kind of like just trusting my ability, you know, trust your work. I put in a lot of work into this game. So, you know, I just got to be able to go out and trust it and just shoot the ball. And that's kind of something that uh, I've just really been kind of honing in on this season. What was it, what was it kind of like without, so your brother wasn't playing? I don't, but it seemed like he was coaching a lot, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. And he did not there, I guess. <laughs> Was that kind of strange, I guess? Just having like one it's a lot quieter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot quieter. Um, it was it was different, but you know, I think they tried to do their best. Like uh, we have a pretty like strict game day routine. You know, we do the same things, come in at the same time, everything like that. So the coaches really did a good job of keeping us comfortable. Because in basketball, it's a rhythm sport. You know, you don't want it ever to be disrupted, and that includes pre-game, post-game, everything like that. You don't want that to ever be disrupted. So um, the coaches did a really good job of keeping everything the same, whether or not my dad was there. Uh, it was a little bit quieter. He probably would have had something to say about how the half ended. <laughs> <laughs> so I was glad he wasn't there for that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, yeah, definitely not quiet. But, like, I mean, like, like other guys have said, he's the voice of the program. You know, we, we go as he goes. So not having him there was different. But uh, I'm glad we'll have him back Thursday. What's it been like for him the last four or five days? Probably pretty weird. Um, he, I know he's been calling like pretty much every player on our team individually just throughout the week. Just I don't know if he's bored or something. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's watching film with uh, Sherm over Zoom. It's a miracle those two were able to get that to happen. Uh, just really <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> no, but um, uh, yeah. So, uh, but they've been really working him and Sherm both, really working to try to get us prepared for Maryland. Uh, helps we already played them. But uh, yeah, no, we had Zoom meetings and stuff, and he's been calling all the guys, and uh, he's, he's still trying to be as involved as he can. But also wants to give uh, Coach Taylor a uh, little more freedom and give him the opportunity to do what he does, and that's be a head coach. So uh, yeah, it's been it's been a little bit of give and take there. Jordan, when when they made the move to the starting lineup, the, I think it was going to be before the Ohio State game anyway. And does Fran come to you with that, and how does that conversation go? Yeah, he just gave me a brief call, you know. We've always had a fantastic relationship, and I've always, you know, trusted him in whatever he decided to do. So um, he could call me a couple days before the Ohio State game and said what he was planning to do, and um, you know, I simply responded, "I just want to win." So whatever, whatever you think that's possible, I, I, you know, I'm right there with you. So um, I'm continuing to always have his back in whatever decisions he's making. And um, I think, you know, right now we're going to start playing one of our best basketballs of basketball of the entire year. So we're lo really looking forward. We have a great um, game coming up against Maryland. So it's going to be exciting. Finish to the year. It's kind of a big stretch for you guys coming up with some home games after after this one. Uh, do you see the importance of that, this stretch? Is that me or him? Either. <laughs> Both of you. I mean, I'll see. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, kind of, that's why you want to play in the Big Ten for big stretches like this. You know, we, we play Michigan, Ohio State, and I don't know, somebody else in like six days or something. I don't know if the schedule is what it is yet, but. I don't even know the schedule. Right I don't, I don't, it's, it's too much going on with, with our schedule. But, um, you know, that's why you sign up to play in the Big Ten. That's what you want to do. You want to, you want to play big time games against Big Ten teams with big time players. And that's what, that's what we're here to do. And so, you know, that's kind of uh, just comes with the territory. 
But um, yeah, I mean, we have we have a chance to really make a statement here in these next couple of games, and we're looking forward to doing so. How much can that schedule uncertainty upset that rhythm that you talked about? Um, it upsets it, but nothing too crazy. Like it's just a little weird. I think if COVID's taught us anything, is just you know just you got to go with the flow. Um, like just stuff happens, and you just kind of got to deal with it. The rhythm I was talking about was more so probably just like pre-game like on as opposed to like days leading up to it so I would say like you know everything but once you kind of get in the zone of the pre-game and then going into the game and everything like that you want everything to be the same and that's always something that we're able to control um, but as a and then like with the games being canceled and stuff you just kind of just got to take it and just keep moving. Jordan you've been I mean it sounds like it probably be three games in five days next week I don't know it's not official yet but just you've been through this stuff before we have to play a lot of games in a short period of time. How, how do you kind of impart what that's like to a lot of these guys that haven't been through that? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to get ready for. You know, a lot of these guys on our team haven't even experienced, you know, let alone playing in front of an NCAA tournament crowd or playing back-to-back -back games at a Big Ten tournament. You know, we have a few guys on our team, but it's basically what we're going to be doing here next week, it sounds like. So um, it takes a lot of mental focus. I think it takes more mental focus than physical focus, honestly, because you know, our physical abilities are going to be there. We've prepared our entire offseason to get to this point, and um, we have the belief that we have a really great team. So a lot of it has to do with mentally, how mentally tough are you, you know, four minutes left in the game to understand what we're trying to execute and how we're trying to execute it. I think that's the most important thing, um, because everyone's, everyone's banged up, everyone's tired, everyone's injured, um, everyone's dealing with something in the league right now. So it's how we can overcome that, and I think our team has done a fantastic job of that. We're in a spot that no one thought we would be. Um, you know, granted, we we wish we could have won a couple games here or there, but you know, no one thought we'd be in the in contention of being the NCAA tournament. Right now, we're looking pretty dang good right now. So we have to continue to understand our end goal and take it game by game, possession by possession, and understand you know the most important thing is the next possession. You're a Virginia fan. Right? See, I it was, shows you know what's going on. Go who's. I, was so I was so nervous for the game, I had to turn it off. So that just shows you where my anxiety. And you made the shot, Jordan, texted in our chat, OMG, OMG. <laughs> like, 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 I swear it was 15 times. Are you that dialed in to where when you've got half the Big Ten season left, you're watching another conference's game for quad one status? I think that's more like I think it's just more like we want Virginia to win. There was nothing else going on. We had an off day, so it's just kind of like you know, might I, as well cheer for them. I'm gonna be honest. I was cheering for a quad one win. I mean, at this point, how NCAA set it up. I mean, start cheering for teams you beat earlier in the season. Why not? Utah State keep winning. Virginia keep winning. Hope Utah State never loses again. Yeah, Justin Bean. I hope he continues to have forty again. Justin Bean, don't miss a shot. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a big one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go Utah State. <laughs> go, what are they, the Aggie? go Aggies. Go Aggies. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>